everybody. This is Jacqueline Byrne. I'm the president of the WIMAX Forum, and welcome to the third in our series of virtual presentations. Um, we're really fortunate today to be joined by kind of a power team of presenters, uh, with you know, representing different aspects of the ecosystem. I will start today's presentation with a uh, few comments about the WIMAX Forum, what we're doing in the Aramax world, and a brief, brief recap of the prior two presentations in this series. And then we'll be followed by Mike Nelson, who is the Vice President of IOT Security with Digitert. Mike's a longtime supporter and friend to Aramax and the WIMAX Forum. More important than that, uh, Digitert is the leading CA, even outside of Aramax, for PKI certificates in the world. And they're really the anchor for what we're doing on PKI and cybersecurity in the WIMAX Forum with their Aramax efforts. So we thought it would be appropriate for Mike to talk about uh, the pedigree of Digitert and the value chain that they're, they're delivering. He'll be followed by Pedro Ponte, who is with uh, the Lisbon Airport. Uh, he's their IT and automation manager. Lisbon is, uh, has the, uh, I guess it's unique in that they were the very first in the world to deploy Aramax commercially, and it expanded. At deployment, they seem pretty happy and proud for what, what they've accomplished, and so Pedro's going to talk a little bit about some sort of the rationale for selecting Aramax and, uh, and the future. Um, and we're going to wrap today with uh, Deepak Gupta, who is a uh, director with Telrad Networks, a company many of you may have known as Alvarion some years back. Uh, Deepak has kind of deep knowledge, technical knowledge, really, of Aramax, uh, given his engineering background. And he has a really interesting presentation talking about um, not only what, uh, what Telrad brings to market, but the success that they've had with various customers around the world not only in Lisbon, but in China, Japan, and other places. I think that'll be a pretty, pretty good series of presentations. Um, the WIMAX Forum, I suspect many of you know, we're a not-for-profit. We, we're not a standards development organization, but we do maintain the Aeromax technical profiles, which are derivative from the, from the ICEEE 802.16 WIMAX standards. We contributed to the de development of the Aeromax technical profile, and, then we, and now we maintain it technical working groups. Uh, other sort of core activities for the forum, we maintain the ecosystem of uh, folks that are interested in adopting Aramax into the networks. Uh, we provide sort of a round table around which members of the ecosystem can share experiences, can sell and buy, sell to and buy from each other. Uh, importantly as well, we also run a certification program for manufacturers where manufacturers that want to bring Aramax equipment to market uh, have an opportunity to run that equipment to spaces at an independent lab, uh, several hundred tests for radio protocol and interoperability testing, and uh, and then bring that certified product to market. Uh, and finally, we do quite a bit on PKI. As mentioned, and I'm sure Michael will add, on, add to this, we have developed a PKI security solution for Aramax, so Aramax network is really fully complete without that. And, uh, and again, we're just delighted that these search been such a key supporter uh, of that process for us and bringing that to market. The very first presentation in our series, we were very lucky to have sort of the regulatory um, decision makers, if you will, from Eurocontrol, Federal Aviation Administration, and the International Civil Aviation Organization kind of join us and talk about the genesis of experiment and the rationale of poor Aramax, how it was selected, and really sort of in a crisp way sort of defining how the aviation community writ large about 15 years ago started asking itself, you know, what technologies should we choose and will be available to us as we bring aviation communications into the 21st century? And I think that Eurocontrol, FAA, and ICAO did a great job sort of explaining the selection of Aramax, the application tool set around Aramax, and where Aramax sits alongside um, LDAX and SATCOM, sort of a free of as, as technologies available to the aviation community, again, as it brings um, aviation communications and com, safety comms, particularly in the 21st century. Our second series, presentation series was uh, we really sort of got into the market, and we were delighted to have Aviation Data Communications Corporation of China uh, which is the uh, data services provider for uh, airports across China. 
talk about their deployment of Aeromax, which is very aggressive and fascinating. They're at over 20, 25 airports now. Uh, they have 110 airports in their plan, their initial plan. And uh, they're really deploying not only mobile and tech services, but in the cockpit as well. And that was great to hear from them. Ionti joined that presentation. Ionti is our partner in delivering PKI to market. Um, and uh, Mike will talk, I suspect, today in his presentation about sort of the partnering role that Ionti plays and takes alongside DigiCert to bring uh, certificates to market for PKI. Uh, we, all, we also had Siemens uh, as one of our uh, largest manufacturing partners, a member of our board, during that second presentation series. And Siemens talked about their success to date with their product portfolio in China and uh, with the Federal Aviation Administration and some other places. So again, we were able to sort of bring it back to real world deployments, which was kind of nice. So I'm not going to dwell a whole lot longer here on the WiMAX Forum. Uh, I think you're, we are known to you, and uh, the more important presenters really are the folks who will follow me. Uh, we stand ready to help uh, sort of help coalesce the ecosystem and curate the standard, if you will. And we're just delighted to bring opportunities like this together to allow important members of the community to sort of talk and present what they're doing and how they're doing it and why they're doing it and the success they're having. So without a whole lot of further ado, um, and certainly the, the prior presentations can give a, a better rationale than ever I could on uh, how, how and why Aramax was chosen, but certainly the key component would have to be that we have a uh, swath of spectrum in the 5 gigahertz range, which is set aside for Aramax exclusive use. That really does give the, the Aramax technology um, from an underpinning to the speed, capacity, performance, security that it can bring to aviation stakeholders as they upgrade the communication networks from the Wi-Fi or cellular, public cellular or what have you, to uh, really what the International Civil Aviation Organization has stipulated in their uh, global air navigation plan is one of three sort of next-gen technology. So we're really happy and proud to be part of that. Now I'm going to pass the mic to Mike Delson and uh, for DigiCert, and uh, Mike, you can take it away. Great. Declan, thank you so much. Appreciate uh, you having me on uh, for this discussion today, and also I uh, just commend you for the great work that Aeromax has done to stand up what, what we're going to talk about today, which I think is a robust PKI and a really uh, solid uh, framework for securing this really important ecosystem. I'm going to start today, and you see a funny uh, video here on on my slide, I, I think that this, I'm asked a lot about what the current state of cybersecurity is uh, with organizations across the world, and I think that this this video kind of, uh, in a humorous way, depicts um, the current state. You see the rider on the bike, he's riding without a helmet, knee pads, any type of protective gear, feeling kind of confident, gets out of his saddle, and before he knows it, something in his bike malfunctions or he hits something in the road, and the next thing he knows, he's face down on the pavement when in an accident that looks like, like it hurts. Um, I think that this is reflective of um, a lot of manufacturers uh, and um, people who, and not just manufacturers, but organizations who are starting to deal with the growing challenge of cybersecurity as more and more of their business connects. And in uh, aviation, airports, uh, connectivity is growing rapidly. And we're going to talk today about what Aeromax has done with PKI to secure that. Um, I had, you know, playing off that video a couple months ago, I had my own um, incident. I was going down uh, a canyon road at about 35 miles an hour. And um, a spoke in my rear wheel uh, came loose and went up into the braking system of my bike, which caused my bike to stop immediately launching me over the front of my handlebars at 35 miles an hour. It was a scary incident. Fortunately, I walked away with, you know, a very minor concussion and lots of road wrecks, but, but I survived. And I can attribute my survival to my, my helmet, the helmet that I was wearing. Several months before this crash, I was actually in a bike shop, and I was talking to a sales guy at, a, at the bike shop, and I was looking at two helmets, which on the surface looked identical. Um, one of them was $60, one of them was $300, and I said to the guy, well, what, what's the difference between these helmets, and which, which one should I get? They look the same. He said, well, if you have a 
you have a three hundred dollar head, get a three hundred dollar helmet. If you have a fifty dollar head, get a fifty dollar helmet. And I kind of laughed, and I was like, "That's a that's a great sales approach," but it really is an important lesson, and it was an important lesson for me on needing to act in advance to do the right things to protect critical assets. So my head, you know, I can break a, I can break my finger, I can break an arm, and I can be okay. But if I damage my head, that can have serious repercussions for the rest of my life. And as I've thought about this and the relations of cybersecurity and kind of where things are going, you know, I think it's really important for organizations to think ahead. Once my bike malfunctioned and I was on my way down to the, the concrete, I didn't have time to change my mind and upgrade my helmet. I had to do the right things in advance. And similarly with cyber breaches, you talk to any executive in an organization who's been part of a cyber breach, it happens rapidly. And all of them wish they had acted earlier to put in place the right protection. And and I, I emphasize, I, I always say, it's not about the the amount of money you spend on your, you know, I, I use the $60 and $300. It's not as much about that. It's about the quality of the solution that you put in place and the thoughtfulness of the solution that you put in place. The difference $300 and $60 helmet is the $300 has carbon fiber woven through the foam. The 60 is just foam. As I looked at my helmet after my accident, the, the foam of my helmet was obliterated, but the carbon fiber absorbed the blow and protected my head. And it was that extra protection that I had put in place that really allowed me to walk away from that accident. So relating that to Aeromax, I mean, the, the architecture that Aeromax has put in place really is setting up and putting um, participants in this standard um, putting in place the right protection to secure those assets that are so important and cannot be compromised. And public key infrastructure was one of the security solutions, is the core security solution to help secure this infrastructure. And public key infrastructure through the use of digital certificates really does three things to address cyber vulnerabilities. It authenticates connections through mutual authentication, making sure that any connection that happens is trusted through the use of public and private keys. It encrypts sensitive data, making sure that any data that needs to be handled in a confidential way is done so through the use of encryption. And then finally, it ensures the integrity of the data. So as, integ as data is moving from the ground up to an airplane, how do you know that that data has accuracy? How do you know that the coordinates or whatever that data contains is accurate, and public key infrastructure can be used uh, as an integrity check to make sure that those values are not being manipulated during transit, have not been modified, um, and that there's integrity so that those using that data to make decisions can make sure that they rely on it. Um, if you go to the next slide, public key infrastructure does those things, but it's much more than just the certificates and the keys that are being exchanged. Public key infrastructure, if done right, is much more. It's more of a comprehensive framework. It has policies, roles, procedures that dictate the way that those certificates are managed, distributed, created. Anything you do with a digital certificate, there should be a policy. There should be procedures around how those certificates are provisioned, when they're revoked, how often they're renewed. And that governance policy as, is as important as the technology itself. And I commend Aeromax for the good work that they've done in this space to make sure that they've thought through the governance and the management of this infrastructure. I think they've done a tremendous job at putting in place the right policies to manage this ecosystem as it grows as it, as it scales globally. So this is a, a snapshot of the Aeromax PKI root architecture. I'm going to spend just a minute um, on this because it's really uh, it's important to understand how this infrastructure has been set up. So it, at the top level, which we call the root CA, Digit Cert uh, is operating that. That root CA is a really important part of the trust ecosystem. Everything beneath that will be signed from the private key contained in that root. And so that root and the security of that root is critical. And Digit Cert is an expert in doing that. We host and we store these things offline. They're only used when 
um, you know, issuing CAs, which are the next level, are brought out and, and spun off. And we, we do, uh, we have a lot of security protections that go in place to make sure that that root CA is secure. At the next level are what we refer to as sub-CAs or issuing CAs. And these are the CAs where the end entity certificates, the certificates that will actually go out to the aircraft and the servers and the different ground devices that are used in this ecosystem, will be issued from these sub-CAs. And as you can see, the architecture that Aeromex has stood up has three issuing CAs, one for aircraft, one for servers, and one for the ground devices. And then finally, at the lowest level is the end entity certificates, and those are the certificates that, of course, are used to authenticate, encrypt, and do those things to ensure the security of the devices and the servers uh, and the aircraft that are operating within this ecosystem. So this is the this is the PKI architecture, and this chain is so important. If we go to the next slide, I'm going to talk for a minute about um, about roots of trust and why those roots are so important. Um, a root, as I mentioned, is that top load certificate in the chain of trust. It contains that private key, which is used to sign all other certificates. If someone were to gain access to that private key, which they won't, if someone were to gain access to it, they could go around, um, they could masquerade as a trusted uh, CA, and they could cause a lot of havoc within that ecosystem. So that private key, which is used to sign all the other certificates, it's important that it's um, secured in, you know, uh, in the best in the best ways. Um, all certificates below the root are signed by that root, and when they do that, they inherit the trustworthiness of the root certificate. Um, having a certificate on a ground device that is signed by the root shows that it is it has gone through the proper steps. And checks, it's met the policy requirements to be able to receive a certificate. So any certificate that um, has a signature from that private route um, can be trusted. And that is how trust is really established within an ecosystem like this. Finally, trustworthiness, of course, um, is critical and it's maintained by those digital signatures. So in an ecosystem like Aeromax that is as complex and global, as, as this, public key infrastructure is a very flexible solution that allows us to scale this infrastructure in a way that can be deployed globally to airports around the globe, and it can allow airplanes to move from airport to airport in a secure, trusted way with interoperability of that data. And so it's a, it's a very robust and it's a proven solution uh, to enable exactly what Aeromax is looking to accomplish. Um, this will be my final slide here, but um, another important part of public key infrastructure is really the uh, facilitation and the management of it. Public key infrastructure is complex, especially as you get into, you know, more and more certificates that are being issued, the management of those certificates, making sure that certificates are only being issued to organizations who have met the policy requirements and done the right things to get the certificate. And a certificate authority, like Digicert helps facilitate that. Certificate authorities, this is a bullet, this is a slide that just uh, highlights some of the important roles of a CA. Um, but what we do is we provide secure issuance of the certificates. We make sure that that chain of trust is intact. We make sure that when certificates are issued, that they're being done in a compliant way with the certificate policy that Aeromax has established. We also authenticate participating organizations. So when someone comes to us and requests a certificate, we make sure that the organization is who they say they are and that the members requesting the certificates have the right and the authority to obtain those certificates. And all of those things are dictated from the policy authority that Aeromax has established. And so we maintain compliance with that as we issue those certificates. And then the third bullet, we maintain the digital and physical security. So as I said, the root CA, making sure that that is secured in the utmost way, we maintain the physical security uh, of that, the root and the intermediate CAs to make sure that there's not compromise there. Um, and then finally, as needed, we can also provide reports and audits um, just to verify the integrity of the system and the architecture to show that 
it's working and that it's secure and that it's, it's doing what it is intended. So that, in a nutshell, is really, um, you know, the um, the decision that Aeromax made to go down the route of PKI was done because of what I just demonstrated, which is a scalable, interoperable security solution that can be deployed globally to airports to allow secure communication from ground to air. Um, as I mentioned at the beginning, I'll, I'll just close with that. I commend Aeromax for the work that they've done to put this infrastructure in place. Um, you know, I believe that uh, from, from the story that I told, this is the version of a $300 helmet to make sure as um, as the industry starts to adopt this globally, that it can scale, that it maintains its security, that it maintains its integrity, and that it can help secure and maintain trust through this uh, important ecosystem. Um, that's what I'll end with that, and really appreciate the opportunity to get on and, and talk through this stuff. Thank you very much, Mike. That was fantastic. And I think when we spend a lot of time talking about security and public infrastructure, which is appropriate. Um, you know, our challenge as we began this process, sort of thinking about how to bring security, security component, if you will, to market within the Aramax ecosystem. We wanted to be robust, robust in class, have really kind of tier one partner like the industry partner with us to bring it to market. But we also didn't want it to be overly complex. And I think uh, we have now arrived at a point in 2020 where, you know, the commercial implementation of PKI that we achieved that goal. Something that's robust, best in class, but also not a clue right, to, to, to either overlay into an existing network or, uh, or embed into a network as it's built. So, uh, again, my thanks to Digister for the, uh, the role y'all have played. And we'll continue to play in that process. So we're going to move now to Europe and uh, to Lisbon. And uh, we're really lucky to have Pedro Bosch from Lisbon Airport talk about their selection of Aramax, the why of it how it's worked for them and where they're headed. So, Pedro, without any further ado, I'll pass to you. Thank you very much for your invitation, for, for this presentation. Um, Mike, I share with you the same pain because I'm also a mountain biker, and I know how hard it is for us all and to have to stand up to see if, if everything is okay with us. So, when, you, when we are trying to do something new and we are trying to implement a, a network, a, a Wi-Fi network within an airport, Every the first thing that comes to our mind is a security issue. So, and PKI is, is definitely going to be something very important for us. But I'll I'll speak to it in, a, in, a, in a, the next slide. Um, I'm presenting basically our project. So we've been working with uh, Aeromax, the previously called WiMAX. What are what, what, what are the big issues uh, on deploying uh, or uh, renting services uh, within the NARA side? So. Everybody knows that the, 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 uh, an air side of an airport is really, really wide. And it's, it's hard. It has a lot of buildings, a lot of aircraft running and then moving around. So for a, 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 an IT department to de deploy or uh, try to implement a Wi-Fi uh, network within that space, it's almost impossible. And um, with the need that we have right now at this point, so... Um, trying to get some parametric CCTV, uh, tools, sensors, runway sensors, uh, you, you can imagine a whole bunch of stuff that needs to be connected to a network or needs to be connected to a system or to a server. It needs connection. So, Wi-Fi, it's almost impossible to do it. And if you wanted to go to fiber optics networks or internet networks, the, the, the cost of implementation would be huge. And that was the, 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 the greatest thing that we saw in Aeromax is the simplicity and the internal investment that we had on deploying that infrastructure on, on our airport. WiMAX, as I told you, has been in the in Lisbon Airport since 2009. So the first network that was deployed, I wasn't there in the company. I came into the company in 2010. So um, I'm basically one of the newest guys in, in the company. So in 2009, it was the... the, the, the Alcatel WiMAX 3.5 gigahertz was deployed to, due to a, a project that was called AirNet. Or, um, it was supposed to be a tablet connected to a WiMAX installed on the Ptolemy's, uh, on the runway uh, vehicles, to avoid uh, incidents 
with the uh, with the aircraft. So that that tablet would be would get the GPS position of the vehicle versus the GPS position of the aircraft sent by our ANSP, and it would be it, it was supposed to be a uh, safe um, ground application to, to in order to help everyone to, to go around the, the airspace, avoiding accidents because this airport has a, a a very troubly manner because we we, we are um, work a lot in the low visibility operation. So because we are near to the we are close to the river, we work uh, during the winter. We work a lot on on during the heavy fog. But that project didn't survive because the the the, the, the dongle, the WiMAX dongle installed on those uh, on those tablets were not sufficiently uh, mature, and the the tablets the the, 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 the even equipment that they were uh, installed on the vehicles were not that good, and also the WiMAX, the, the WiMAX network had a lot of uh, infrastructure problems. They had a lot of interferences because it, uh, it, and it was also a 3.5 gigahertz. It was a commercial license, and I believe that the project was abandoned. In 2012, uh, our our company, basically our airport manager reached to, to me and my colleagues uh, trying to see because they wanted to install some message, some low visibility message panels around the airside. And they were asking me, hey, can we do this with fiber optics? Can we do this with Wi-Fi? And I basically just told my, 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 my colleague, okay, we have a Wi-Fi network. Why, why don't we use that? And we started to move ourselves, trying to, to get some information with uh, with our Anacom uh, uh, our uh, communication uh, national authority to start, start to see if we could use it or not. But everybody was told me told us that the 3.5 gigahertz license has already been bought by a local telco, which for us was a bit a bit complicated for, because we we lose the opportunity to, to become a, a, an operator on the 3.5 gigahertz. But from a, uh, the help of our colleagues on the, the development uh, and the uh, Research and Development Department. They were told they were they told us that there were some standardization that uh, uh, basically the WiMAX on the five gigahertz uh, standard was going, is, is, is being uh, defined. And what we did was okay, let's see if we can move it to a five gigahertz network. It, just doing an upgrade on the base station that we can use it because it, since it's starting to be a, a, a standard, it, it's probably a good solution. It would be more easy to implement because it will only require it will require less base stations. It would be easier to manage and uh, let's see, let's talk. So what we did was we, we reached out to, to Alcatel at the time and Alcatel told us, okay, we've we've, we've dropped out the, the, the WiMAX deployment, but we have an, an alternative which is called Alvarian, which is an Israeli company which Declan uh, uh, has already presented, which is now called Telrat. And basically they it presented to us a solution with the, 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 the with the with the thing that the thing that we presented here on, on the side, so we could cover the entire air side with a with a WiMAX network running on the five gigahertz, which was basically the standard for the Aramax. So we were installing the on um, the Aramax network uh, in 2012, even parallel to the standardization of the of the the, the network. Luckily for us. Uh, we were able to deploy it on 2012, so we had at the time eight base stations. Uh, we had two um, single factors and three dual factors um, uh, base stations on, on our airport. We were able to cover the entire airside, and we were able to deploy a project that our our colleagues first first called the first, the first um, challenge us, which was the the, the the low visibility message panel. And we saw the the, the the possibility that 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 was shown us to us. It was it was like a, a discovery for us. Okay, we can do this for that. We can do this for everything. We can basically grant connectivity to every point on the air side. And the uh, time went by, went by, so we started to deploy more and more applications. We started to deploy a lot of um, CCTV networks, CCTV cameras on on the on the on the, on the periphery of of the airport. Uh, and also within the vehicle, uh, which was uh, really cool, cool stuff. We have a, a, a fire, the fire department on, on this airport as a mobile command post. It's basically a bus with a, 
big uh, meeting room inside, and we were able to grant connectivity to that, that bus. So if, for example, if there is an accident on the runway or on the most remote side of, of, the, of the airport, that bus goes to that side. It basically connects to our Aeromark network, and it basically connected to the infrastructure that we have. CCTVs, desktop systems that we have, we, we were able to grant connectivity to them, even voice. Uh, and, okay, time went by, so 2012, 15, 16, and by the end of 2018, we were getting a little bit worried because, as you probably know, Alvarin was, was, was going through a difficult, difficult time, and we started to get worried, okay, what, what, what's the future? On our, uh, on our network. Is it, is the WiMAX on the 5 gigahertz will standard be the future for us? We will, are we able to maintain this technology and this, and the, 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 this hardware that we have? And we were starting to get a little bit worried because everybody was calling, telling me, well, okay, we have to, okay, we have to be aware that our parent is going to shut down. But the future, and everybody was calling, telling us about ELTEs and LTEs and yada yada yada, all of those commercial solutions, which for us was not a, a good solution because our infrastructure was managed and operated locally by our, by our staff. And also, we have probably the, uni, uh, the, the only Aeromark license uh, uh, issued by our, uh, our national authority for communication. So, we are officially an Aeromark operator in, in Portugal. Uh, and the license will be renewed this year. Um, and we were safe. Okay, we have an Aeromax installation which is licensed, which is protected. We are granting our services to our colleagues, our, our uh, internal uh, teams, our internal uh, divisions. Okay, what's the future? So, and luckily for us, uh, we, we, we started to, to Google it and we reached out to the WinEx forum and to, to Eurocontrol and to the and for this, I have I have my my I have to thank Jacqueline Byrne, Alessandra, and Nico from Eurocontrol because they were uh, the, a huge help because they basically told us, guys, you are the only airport in in, in Europe that's running an Aeromax network. It's not a certified Aeromax, but it's it's closely to that. And guys, this is this is this is something that is going to be for for a long time here because everybody is looking for this. And I've, they were telling me that Siemens, Telrad, they are all manufacturing, they are all doing stuff with Aeromax. Okay, then for us it was like uh, the light on the end of the tunnel. Okay, guys. And what I've decided with, with my colleague, Jesus, said, okay, we, what, 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 we will maintain the infrastructure, we will maintain the project, we just have to be certified. And then by the end of, of by the beginning of 2019, we did an RFP requiring uh, an upgrade or on our WiMAX 5 gigahertz network to the Aeromax network, which, which was basically uh, uh, replacing all of the base stations with the brand new base stations certified for Aeromax, and also the CPEs, uh, the fixed CPEs and the mobile CPEs, and it was a project that it took us, I would say, less than a month to, to deploy. I believe the, the, the hard thing was the negotiation and the, the, the purchase part of it because the deployment was left, was done less than a month. Uh, uh, so, and we are in the, on the middle of 2020, we have our network up and running. We are still deploying, uh, stuff in our, in our, uh, in our network. Uh, we are trying to do a test with, with the TAP, with a fight between Rio de Janeiro and, and Brazil. And I'm trying to reach out to guys from KP, but uh, with COVID, everything went, went back into a, a stop now. Um, this is basically what I've what I've been told in the, in the, in the previous slide. So the, the, the network was installed in February 2019. Was, uh, the installation was done by a local integrator. Uh, we had the support from Telrad. Uh, we are maintaining our operator license uh, because we are using the same frequencies. We haven't change basically nothing, it's just hardware change, which was really good for us. Uh, that's why it took, took, took us more, not, not more than one month. So in basically in detail, what we have right now at this point, so we have eight PlayStation, three single factor, two, uh, three dual factor and two single factor. We are covering uh, the entire side. We have a, a, 
centralized ASM gateway, so we can manage the CPE central, uh, centralized. Uh, this was something that we didn't have on the previous infrastructure. We had a, a, an embedded uh, ASM gateway within every base station. So for example, if I wanted to re re register a CPE, uh, a mobile CPE, I had to have the tough job of registering every that CPE on every base station. Which now at this point I only do it on the ASM gateway, and basically it moves around the the, the, the base station without any any worries. So it, it, Moving from one base station to another, deregistering and deregistering re on the next base station without any issues. And in a very quick manner, which is something that was improved a lot from the previous network, what we have at this time, we have, we have purchased 36 subscribers and 10 mobile subscribers. Uh, we have actually right now deployed, I would say, around 10 subscribers between mobile and fixed. And basically, we are managing our, our entire infrastructure with an NNS server. We have a AAA server for the authentication and the accounting. And our internal services done by our, our, our backbone. Uh, as I told you, it's a centralized ASM gateway using the AAA for authentication and accounting. Um, we are managing the, the services. So we have, we have a lot of services that we created for specific applications, which uh, basically is Managing VLAN passing through through the through the network. So, for example, if I have only a, a low visibility panel, we are only passing one VLAN. If I have more than one VLAN, or for example, we have a, a container, um, we, we are using a container as a mobile uh, security checkpoint. Inside that container, we have, for example, uh, two CCTV cameras. We have an X-ray machine. We have a PC that registers the accesses and issuing cards. We have a, a metal detector uh, passed through uh, for, for, the, for the person. And all of those systems are integrated on our centralized services at Bond by the Aeromax network, which is for us, it was amazing because if I wanted to install the, the security checkpoint on the far side of the air side of the, of the Lisbon airport, we could do that. We just install that container there, just power on with, with electricity and then we re register the the, 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 the CT that's installing that's installed on that container on our network and boom. We are able to grant services to that container. Just for you to know, uh, because of COVID nineteen so we, we are we are facing a lot of problems right now because of all of our air, aircraft are grounded. Which is bad for us and good for for other things. We are doing a lot of construction right now and we have at least I would say two containers. So we are serving two containers at this point using the Aeromax. So in terms of, of implementation, that's something that was almost impossible to do in, in, in prior to, to having an Aeromax. So because people would have to install a fiber optic uh, cable to, 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 to that point or to the other point, and basically it wouldn't be possible to do that because the cost of implementing fiber optics, <laughs> you, you can imagine, right? Um, luckily for us, the locations of, of the base stations uh, were were uh, were installed on on buildings when we have uh, fiber optics. So the, the base stations are backbone by a, a fully redundant uh, fiber optic network. Okay, next slide, please. And basically, this is the look of the, the, the installation that we have right now. The first picture on, on, on the top of the slide, you see it's on the top of the fire department system. So this is a dual sector. So we have two base stations, one facing north and the other facing south, which is basically covering the north part of the airport and the other one is facing the southwest part, southeast part of the airport. Um, the, the, the lower picture is also a dual sector, which is facing, uh, I believe, southeast and south North, I would, no, 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 southwest, southeast, southwest. Uh, um, so, so with, with this configuration, we are able to, to, to cover the entire air side. Uh, our, our base stations, as I told you, are from Telrat. So we are using the 5 gigahertz frequency. We are using the, the, the general bandwidth of 5 megahertz. And basically, we are using the maximum transmitting power of the base station, which is 20 BDM. Next slide, please. So this is a heat map when we can show basically our um, our airport. 
So uh, we were we had two runways, but now we shut down the the the, the, the smaller runway. We are now at this point a single runway airport, okay? Because of the development plans for for Lisbon Airport, we have, we have closed the, the runway seven one seven three five, and we are only operating with the zero three two one. So the longest one that we see on the picture. These are the locations of our base station. Uh, so as you can see, we can grant service to every point on 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 the airfield. Uh, we are able to uh, grant handover for the vehicle within that airspace, within that air, air airfield, with a uh, well, with a handover as quickly as less than two seconds. For, for what we see in our test. Uh, as I told you, this were the, the first picture that you see. The low visibility panels were basically the 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 the, 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 the application that basically uh, was the sponsor for maintaining the, the WiMAX and the Aeromax network. So these panels they give some information, some useful information so for the people that are running on the runway. And the the only way that they would communicate was using the WiMAX and the Aeromax network. Um, prior to that, we started to install the CCTV parametric IP camera. So we have 4K cameras installed now using using the Aramark. So we have, I would say, more than 30 or 40 cameras uh, connected to an industrial switch, which is also backbone by the Aramark. All of these CCTV cameras are being recorded by our our internal VMS. So we are able to integrate everything in our in our in our infrastructure. Um, without any trouble. Okay, the Sprite Department uh, mobile command post. I told you so. Inside there's a there's a, a small meeting room with all of the systems that are supporting them: communication, CCTV camera, um, the CCTV. There's a CCTV desktop that basically serving uh, the people that are running on 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 the hut. And they are able to see all of the cameras running on the, the VMS. So we are able to give them access to the VMS with the Aeromark. And also our operational vehicles. So people that are doing some, uh, the maintenance tasks, maintenance tasks, uh, on the airfield. A lot of people, a lot of our technicians, they need access to the, to the, to the, to the documents, to the maintenance plans, to the maintenance tasks, and they need connectivity to, to, to check that. And, we, we, we started to implement it just for fun, the, the, the Aramark within the vehicles, but people, they started to see that as, as it, it was so reliable that everybody that buys a new truck or a new bus for our company, they, they want us to implement and they want us to deploy the Aramark. It's more reliable than the, the, the 3G or the 4G or and even better than the Wi-Fi because our, there are points in, in our airfield that are uh, they're not covered by, by, by those um, technologies. Uh, and with the Aeromax that we have right now, we are able to do that. I even done um, a test with with the uh, with the YouTube. I was able to do a test with with a, with a YouTube video on those on that on that vehicle, just to see if if I have any failures. So I was able to do go around the bus, go around the the, the airfield, and I haven't lost any any video. Um, at this point, and from from what we are we are at the point that we are now, so we are. Serving our purposes internally as an airport operator to our services for our applications. And we, what we can we do? We can, our, what we want to do in the future, okay, we can do more. We can, we want to do more because like we see that there's a lot of people that are, uh, um, that have the same thing that we have. That have the same difficulties that we have. That typically is lack of connectivity, the, 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 the operator, the, the communication operator that we are using are not as good as it is, uh, the coverage uh, is not the best, and with this infrastructure, basically, there's no problems with these appearances, uh, uh, the, the, the coverage and the, the, the radio uh, timing that we did, so we were able to do that without reducing any type of interference. Uh, we are able to interconnect our, 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 our network to our external stakeholders, um, we are seeing a lot of movement from our ANSG and also our ground, ground handling team from, from uh, airport that are trying to reach out to us. Okay, guys, can you please help us because what we have right now is not sufficient, it's not working for us. And basically at this point, we are looking for 
uh, uh, the handheld solutions for for uh, handheld uh, running Aeromax, um, trying to reach out to the, our NSP to see what what can we do to help them uh, releasing the the, the, the fully uh, settling that we had that they have. And basically, with with the test that we want to do with the with the size between Brazil and 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 Lisbon, and why Brazil? Because Brazil has an Aeromax uh, from another uh, manufacturer, which is given. And for us, it would be interesting using, for example, the PKI um, solution, which is something that's very important for us, not only uh, grant access, but also to ensure the security of those access, of, of, them, of those accesses. And the best thing of, of, of this is it, it, it's, a, it's done with a reduced budget, so it's, we need much less equipment, and the cost of the equipment, the cost of the subscribers are really, really low. It's like an, an iPhone. So people that buy, buy an iPhone can buy a CPE, and with the CPE we can ensure connectivity to a lot of a lot of uh, systems and applications within the airspace. Uh, so we are we are pretty glad with with the solution we have. We are basically being contacted with with uh, with a lot of people that are starting to reaching out with with interest for our solution. Uh, I'm just sharing with you that we had a visitor from people from South Korea, and they were very interested in our project. And I've heard of them that are that are that they are moving on to deploying in more than 15 airports in, in, in South Korea. Is this technology because as as they as I've seen it, they also see it as a possibility and the, the easy easiness and the the, the the uh, expansion that the, and the scalability that this network and this technology gives us. Uh, and I would like to thank you again uh, for for this you know, invitation. And I invite you, when basically we, everybody can try, to pay us a visit, and we can give you a, a, a tour of our of our airport and our and what we have here done. Because one thing is to see it in flight, the other thing is to see it in place. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Pedro. Um, one can tell that you are justifiably proud of what you achieved in this airport. And uh, we, uh, we had organized, I think folks know this, we had organized a two-day summit in Lisbon in the April-May time frame, but then COVID-19 uh, sort of bollocks our plans up. But we're hopeful that uh, in late Q3, Q4, we can, we can successfully hold our conference. I think you're right. It's, a, it's exactly the opportunity. It's one thing to see in slides what's possible, what you all achieved, but it's uh, quite another thing to talk to you face-to-face, -face, look at the climate, exchange you. So we're, we're, we're optimistic uh, that we'll be able to hold such a conference and a conference that we for all participants. So our first presenter today is uh, Deepak Gupta, who is a uh, person with deep technical knowledge uh, about Aramax, but more than that, has got a good understanding of how customers are using, how and why customers are using uh, Aeromax, why are they purchased from Telrad? So, Deepak, without further ado, I'll pass it to you. Thank you, Declan, and thank you for the opportunity to uh, present our uh, implementations and applications uh, that we have achieved over Aeromax. And uh, in today's session, I decided that we should look at implementation and applications and, and uh, our journey with Aeromax. Uh, uh, through, through these applications and implementation. So if, if I go a bit uh, in the history, Elvarion has been part of the development of the WiMAX standard and, and the Aeromax standard with WiMAX Forum since 2007. And uh, in uh, you know, our first deployment or pilot started with uh, uh, with NASA in Cleveland Airport uh, together with Glenn Research Center. And um, the purpose uh, was, uh, you know, to validate the technology and see the effects uh, of uh, of Aeromax on 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 uh, not only um, on the overall operation of the airport, but also the, for for communication, for interference with other uh, other ground uh, communication systems. So, as a result, we were uh, successfully able to validate. The, the technology on or Aeromax as such, and uh, well, initially during 2009, some of the you know tests or uh, 
the applications that were used for uh, over air max were to collect information from sensors such as wind sensors, at weather stations, and, and runway lights for surveillance. And uh, then later on, uh, in, in the meantime, actually, um, Radeon PW division got acquired by Telrat in 2013. And then thereafter, in 2016, as part of the next phase of, of pilot deployment at this same airport. So, uh, using the Aeromax network, they, they managed to transmit aviation data, such as route options, weather information, to a moving plane. Not only that, they were able to, you know, manage mobile assets such as emergency vehicles and also to locate them, uh, locate these assets uh, on the air side of the, of the airport. So we, we, we achieved quite, bit, uh, quite a lot of success uh, with this deployment. And uh, then we started, uh, you know, after the after success here, we started to talk about other, uh, talk to other operators around the world. So, yeah, the next uh, the next round of deployment we had was in China with our partners to, and with with CAR3, which is the second research institute of CAAC. And uh, we, we had, a, 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 you know, a few deployments there, and there were a lot of uh, various applications uh, uh, which were implemented on this, sometimes for perimeter surveillance, sometimes for CCTV, uh, for, uh, you know, um, as we talk now, I mean, now we are talking about, you know, the taxi. Uh, move to the next slide. Some of the applications uh, that we are seeing in China now are for the taxi based on Aeromax. This is used for uh, monitoring air surface, surface movement as well in real time using ATC guidance and GIS maps and also surface, surface vehicle surveillance based on uh, BDS, which is Chinese uh, GPS and Aeromax. And also guidance material of aer uh, aerodrome uh, communication service. So as, as you see, a lot of developments happening in China, and uh, we continue to collaborate with our partners there, and uh, you know continue to do uh, deployments and many other courses. Next slide. So this is uh, this is from uh, uh, a pilot deployment that we, uh, we did in uh, Haneda, Japan, for um, with Avicom. Uh, who is the operator there, airport operator there, and um, this was done with the Fujitsu Networks, who are uh, who are the system integrator for this. We are part of the second phase of the trial that they conducted at the same airport, and uh, some of the applications they uh, tried to test were location services and uh, and also a CDM, which is collaborative decision making uh, for uh, data link taxing and uh, System-wide information management. So, and they were, the, the results were quite successful. And uh, now, as we as we move forward, they continue to, you know, do various tests and develop more and more applications over the over Aeromax networks. And finally, they are planning to move towards commercial deployment uh, in uh, in 2021. So, if you look at, uh, they also managed to test. Uh, airport vehicle location services for this pilot network. So it was a real-time uh, identification of locations of the vehicle uh, at the, uh, from the operation center. Also, they were able to set up uh, geofencing and uh, you know warning zone. And uh, also, there was real-time delivery of video images on vehicles uh, from from the vehicles to the uh, to the operation center. So I think uh, we have achieved quite a bit uh, in Japan, uh, and a lot of uh, uh, as we, we also continue to do a lot of other tests uh, uh, and work closely with uh, uh, with Avicom Avicom in Japan. Next slide. This is uh, again this was a Lisbon airport, which uh, I think Pedro covered uh, beautifully, and uh, I mean he he explained. Uh, of uh, how how uh, beneficial uh, Aeromax has been for them, and uh, uh, other than this, I think uh, so. We we continued. Uh, I mean, we continue to talk to operators around the world. 
airport operators around the world and we are in various stages of deployment in many many airports and as as i mean of course due to the covid situation things have stalled but uh, in near future we hope to have many more deployments so rather than talking much about the technology so i'll just speak on the value proposition of uh, our of the rad uh, in 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 the uh, in the aeromax domain so we have a you know a field proven vinex track track record, record with over 100 customers and a lot of them you know still continue to run vinex network and are we have the only solution with supporting ethernet ps and also handovers we are compliant or we get a, a solution is based on uh, profile c uh, with an async gateway and we were the first company to have a certification for our ttp primary forum and if you look at our, our base station platform is is a software fan radio so it, you know it is geared up for a long life cycle and uh, you, with with any any technology evolution that happens we we are geared up we have a complete feature a full set with profile c ethernet cs ethernet and ipcs and also on the interoperability aspect we are interoperable with uh, third party devices whether it's on the on the cp side or the or the base station side so I think we we are looking forward to a very exciting future with Euromax, with more and more uh, you know airport operators getting interested uh, in the value proposition of Euromax. So that that I think I wrap up with this. Thank you. Thank you, uh, thank you. Thank, thank you Deepak. That was fantastic. I, I really appreciate how you uh, how you talked about the applications and the use cases for for various of your customers, and um, we're delighted to have Torad. And I'll vary on before that, uh, as a long-time board member of the Linux Forum, providing this kind of oversight guidance and governance, which is just fantastic. So that concludes today's series of presentations. Um, as I think you will sense from what the folks have been talking about, we, although we've been at this now, this technology development effort, the standards development effort for about 10, 15 years, we're really starting to accelerate into commercial deployments. And as you can see from the, from the slide being presented, uh, we started off slowly way back when in 2009 in Cleveland with NASA, uh, but now we're probably at over 50, 55 airports around the world on many continents. So the future is absolutely bright for air. Uh, we work hard, we play hard, uh, but it's a great group of people and, and I'm just proud to stand alongside you all. So I want to thank again, uh, Mike, Pedro, Deepak, uh, for your effort today. And, uh, again, thank your organizations for your longstanding support. Uh, particularly, Pedro, we look forward to a, a growing and successful deployment in Portugal. We look forward to kind of joining you in Portugal to uh, drink a glass of red wine and also yes, yes, yes. Visit, visit, visit the deployment and hear from you how you've grown. <laughs> so with that, we'll close today's session. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.